Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for December 20th, 2021. It's that time of week when we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython and how cold it is suddenly in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Jeff and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython, which is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. While there's activity on the Discord server almost any time, any day, uh, we hold this meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. These meetings typically happen on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except uh, sometimes based on U.S. holidays, the meeting time has been changed. For the next three weeks, we are actually holding the meetings at the normal time. If you check the notes document, there is a link to a calendar that you can add to your favorite calendar app so you can uh, track when the meetings are, including in your own local time zone. This meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and the text from the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you're still welcome to participate by leaving text notes. The video of the meeting will be posted to YouTube, and then the audio is released onto major podcast services. If you find we're not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. This is where you leave your notes if you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, or just prefer to have your notes read aloud. If you're watching this uh, later, please check in the, um, in the video description or podcast description for a link to the notes document because you can use that to uh, find the timestamps and skip to the part that interests you the most. The meeting is tended to run 60 to 90 minutes, but I suspect today will be a short meeting as we have a smaller uh, group due to the holidays. Let's see. So the structure of the meeting, we hold the meeting in five parts. Next up is community news, where we get a preview of the Python on microcontrollers newsletter and take a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware. After that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, where we look at some statistics, mostly from GitHub, uh, that tell us about the health of the project in an objective way. Then the third part is Hug Reports. It's my favorite because we take the time to highlight the good folks that things around us in the community are doing and just uh, shine a little spotlight of recognition on the awesome folks in our community. Then Status Updates. Uh, gives us the opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Uh, just like in Hug Reports, we invite everybody to take a moment to uh, tell us what's going on, but this time it's about you. What have you been up to since the last time we had a chance to get together, and what do you hope to get up to soon over the next week, or if you won't join us until the after the New Year's for the next few weeks. Then the last part, if we need it, and I think we've got some topics, is called In the Weeds. This is a time for long-form discussion where we anticipate um, multiple participants and um, just uh, any, any place we want discussion and we want to come up with a conclusion. Anyway, so that is how the meeting will go. And with that, I get to take my first time code. I get to scroll to the proper part of the document. Take a time code and tell you about community news. So uh, first up, Adafruit appears on the PyCast talking about the KB2040 board for custom keyboards. Tomorrow, Tuesday, December 21st at 2.30 p.m., we're going to have a live YouTube show with the Adafruit CircuitPython team about Adafruit's new KB2040 board for custom keyboards. Capable of running Arduino and CircuitPython, it's an Arduino mini form factor, but packs many more features. And uh, it sounds like Dan, Scott, and I will be talking uh, to the hard Tom's Hardware people and uh, we hope you can tune in. And of course, since that's on YouTube, um, you'll be able to check it out after the fact if you can't be right there in the moment. Next up, thank you to Anne for spotlighting a calculator project, which looks frankly awesome. Uh, the text says, a retro RPN calculator using the Adafruit PyPortal Titano with CircuitPython. With the user interface mostly done, next is the calculator emulation. And there are links to Twitter and also a YouTube video. Oh, of course it's Cedar Grove. Thank you for that much. I didn't realize that. All right. Third, topping your tree with a glowing rhomb icosado 
decahedron. I'm not even gonna, gonna try saying that again. Uh, it is a tree topper lit by five RGB LEDs powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico and CircuitPython. And there's links to a blog called Age of Awareness as well as a YouTube video. Uh, the text says, a nice subtle classy tree, a uh, light on the tree, let me try that again. A nice subtle classy light on the top of our tree. I probably should have left it at that, however, I was so taken by how easy the Pico was to set up that I grabbed a five meter rope of LEDs, which I had reserved for another project, and threw them into the tree too. Next, we have the Idiot Proof Guide to Updating Raspberry Pi from Buster to Bullseye. Uh, as a lot of you may know, the new version of Debian came out a couple of months ago. Now it is ready to run on all of your Raspberry Pi single board computers, and there is a guide for upgrading your system in place from Buster to Bullseye. Although it's not recommended by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, this will preserve your installed packages and files. Okay, I'll wrap up with some LEGO base plates for Stemma boards. These 3D printed holders feature built-in standoffs for press fitting. Stemma boards plug and play with various devices and accessories without any soldering. And of course, there are links to Twitter, YouTube, and the Adafruit Learn system because that appears to be by our very own Noe and Pedro. So there is a lot more in the draft newsletter. I cribbed just some of the top and most exciting items. Uh, thanks, big thanks to Anne for putting this together most weeks. Uh, the CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are on adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And according to Anne, next week we will have guest editor emeritus Phil Tyrone. So that wraps up community news, and we will move on to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So we gather stats uh, daily about the last seven days of activity on GitHub. So this covers uh, approximately from last Monday until now, or until mid-morning, or mid middle of the night, um, Eastern time, I think. Anyway, our statistics are that across all the projects, we had 49 pull requests merged from 25 authors, which is an amazing number. And I apologize, I didn't go through this looking for new names, but 25 authors. That's, it's just an amazing number, so I will make that the, uh, the top note there. For reviewers, we had 10 reviewers. Reviewers are the people who keep the GitHub process going. When an author makes a change, a reviewer goes through it, says this looks good to me, or I tested it. And informal reviewers are also always welcome, and the script does not explicitly recognize them. So if you ever take a look at a pull request and uh, you know test it out or give feedback on it, we appreciate that too, and we value it. Um, but these are people who are officially designated within the GitHub webpage as a reviewer. So thank you to all those people. Issues wise, we closed 38 issues and 31 issues were opened. So we were net down on issues and uh, we had 11 people closing issues and 23 people opening them. So again, we've got a great level of um, community activity there. So next we will drill down into uh, several subsections, the core, the libraries, and Blinka. And so for the core, I will hand off to Scott to give us the details. Hello, let me scroll up. All right. I was, re I was writing some notes for later. Uh, so for the core, we had 23 pull requests merged from 15 different authors. So thank you to all of our authors. Uh, some new names to me, RS Bone, I think is, uh, and Nathan Y3G, Tim Hawes, Drone CZ, uh, Warrior of Wire, and As Asura99, Duckman00 are all uh, infrequent contributors, if not new contributors. So thank you to all of them. And we had six reviewers, so thank you to all of our reviewers for helping get those pull requests merged. Uh, we have 12 open pull requests where the oldest is open 107 days. Um, so again, if you are uh, related or working on, or have worked on some of these open pull requests, please just circle back and see 
if there's something that we can do to get them moving along. Um, and uh, remember, they can always, the branches can still exist and have issues related to them, but generally we like to keep uh, pull requests kind of like either actively being worked on or closed. So please go back and take a look at that. Uh, issues wise for the core, we had 11 closed by five people and nine opened by nine people. So we're net down two, which is awesome. Um, for a total of 465 open issues. I feel like we've been kind of around this 450 mark for a while now, which is pretty good. Um, I'd, we've doing, been doing a pretty good job keeping up with all of it. Uh, the way that we track uh, kind of prioritization of issues is uh, through the milestone system. Uh, we have four issues not assigned to milestone, so those are things that we need to just take a look at and triage. Uh, we have zero open issues for 710, so uh, Based on this, we could release 710 stable, whatever we wanted. Uh, I actually don't know what the plan for that is, but we could talk about that later if we like. Uh, we have 18 open issues for 7xx, which are things that we probably want to get to sooner rather than later, um, and 10 open issues for 80. So uh, that's where we are on issues, and uh, that's it for me. All right, thank you. Yeah, it seems like maybe we should briefly talk about that in the weeds if somebody wanted to add that as a topic, if it's not there already. I would think either we want to transfer some issues into that milestone so we know what we need to do, or just take the plunge and have 7-1. But uh, we'll leave that for later. I don't, I don't want to... Yeah, I'll add the, it in the weeds. Get off the track, and instead I will hand it off to Katni to talk about the libraries. Hello, Katni. Hello. All right, is my audio good? Yeah, it sounds great. All right, because I got everything set up, so we're good. All right, so this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras. Um, so over all of those repositories, we had 21 pull requests merged by eight different authors. There's some names I see that are new. Tony L. Hansen, Fantastic Dan, 300 BPS, Joe Baird are all uh, new names to me, and six reviewers. Um, the oldest merged pull request is 65 days. Um, at least five of them, it looks like, six of them are over um, a week old. So we're getting to, slowly getting through the older PRs, which is really excellent. And uh, based on the number of PRs total, we are definitely keeping up with new PRs as well. Um, we have had uh, so it leaves us with 49 open pull requests. We have had um, 27 issues closed by 9 people and 19 opened by 13 people, uh, leaving us with 643 open issues. 250 of those are labeled good first issue. If you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more and if you're interested in contributing code, take a look at the issues. If you're new to everything, um, Good First Issue is a great place to start. Otherwise, you can check out Bug or Enhancement. Um, if you want to get started with reviewing, check out the open PRs. If you see something uh, that you have hardware for, test it. If you don't have hardware, take a look at the code. Let us know what you think. Leave a comment, and once you're comfortable with that, we'll talk about upgrading you to actually joining the review team. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, uh, we have no new libraries, but there is a list of uh, updated libraries, which I will not uh, read off this week, but it's available in the notes. Um, and as I said, we are uh, slowly working through the older PRs. So if you are an author on one of those, um, expect to see some activity. Uh, we're trying to merge the ones that make sense, but some of them obviously will be closed. Um, if it's a feature that you still want to add, you can always open a new PR, which is usually the easiest thing when it's a really old PR. Um, or we can walk you through updating a current PR if you uh, really want to go that route. Um, but expect to see some activity uh, on older stuff. And that's what we've got. Thank you, Katni. And next to round out this section, uh, I will give maker Melissa a chance to tell us what is up with Blinka. Hello, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had five pull requests merged by five authors, and that's awesome. Uh, and there were two reviewers. 
There, were, there are six open poll requests at this point, and there were zero closed issues by zero people and three open by three people, uh, leaving a net of 68 open issues. There were 14,704 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are currently supporting 85 boards. And All that's right. it. Thanks, Melissa. And exciting to see Foamy Guy appear on the Blinka list. I think that leaves no part of uh, Circuit Python that Foamy Guy has not been touching. So. Ah, true. All right. With that, we are going to move on to the first round robin section called Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a round robin. I will start, and then we will go alphabetically down the list. And if you are present in the meeting and wish to speak, unmute when I get to you and talk, and otherwise I will read your notes. So anyway, I have a first hug report for Dan. Uh, for just this morning, we talked through some stuff with Cascade Tommel that was causing problems building CircuitPython, and he did a quick review on some code there. And thanks to Scott for running the meeting while I was on vacation. I We ended up switching the meetings all around, and uh, anyway, last week would have been me, but Scott took it, and so thanks for that. And lastly, a group holiday hug. Next up, uh, Charles Berniford sends a group hug and a happy holidays. All right, I'll hand it off to Dan and then I'll read some more notes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks to Tetrick, who has been uh, doing a lot of type annotation in the libraries. That's really helpful and there was a particularly difficult one that they did that uh, came out very well. Thank you. Uh, thanks to Tim Hawes and Microdev for working on some exception handling issues. That's really helpful. Uh, we don't have to work on it. And it's, uh, anyway, just thank you for working on it. Tim Hawes is, is newly working on the core stuff. And thanks to Rick James, who has a PR about adding internal pull-up support for I2C in CircuitPython as SCAF999. And I talked to them last week to straighten out some technical issues it's been very helpful. So it's been great to work with them on that PR. Okay. All right. I have more notes from a couple of people, and then after that, it will be Katni. So first, I have notes from David Gloud, uh, who has a hug for Paint Your Dragon for updating New Year's Matrix Photo Demo for 2022, to Foamy Guy for the stream, and for the library that makes EEPROM more accessible from CircuitPython. To Tectric for solving an issue I totally forgot about, and more importantly, for contributing to the Foamy Guy EEPROM library. To Ann B for the Learn Guide on Web NFC. And to JP for the product pick of the week on uh, November 24th, the NFC tag. And there are some links in the notes if you're wondering about any of those things that David was referring to in more detail. Next, I have notes from Foamy Guy, who has a hug for Tectric for submitting many typing PRs and various other fixes across several libraries, to Maker Melissa for updating Blinka Display I.O. to match the latest API for Core Display I.O. and adding typing information to it, a hug to Warrior of Wire for updating the Vectorio rectangle to have a mutable size, a hug to David Glad for testing out the EEPROM library on some different devices, including the NFC breakout, and last, a group hug. All right, next we have Katni and then Melissa, so take it away. All right, so first up, um, a general hug to uh, everyone who sent me supportive thoughts during uh, my recent move, which I will talk about in status updates, um, to Sam's Moving, uh, which is a moving company in Ottawa, Canada, uh, for coming in at the last minute and doing an amazing job, to everyone for keeping up with things while I was out last week, to more people that I'm sure I am missing. Uh, it's been a bit of a scramble, so I did not get a decent list this week um, and a group hug. Thank you. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. So I wanted to give a hug report to Foamy Guy for reviewing my Blinka Display IO update PR so quickly. Uh, to Le Samurai Poupre for the Blink uh, display IO rewrite, which I've been referencing while updating it, and a group hug to everyone else. All right, thank you. Next, I'll read notes for Mark, and finally, we will let Scott round out the section. So, uh, Mark just has a group holiday hug for y'all. Go ahead, Scott. Hello, uh, hug report to Rick James for diving into the core uh, and really getting into the weeds. So, good, good on them. Thank you. 
And uh, just a general thank you to everybody for an awesome uh, year of CircuitPython. This is my last meeting uh, for a couple weeks. So uh, thank you all, and I'm excited for CircuitPython 2022. Thank you, Scott, and have a happy new year when the time comes. <laughs> you too. All right, with that done, we will head to status updates. Uh, just a reminder, we want to hear about what you've been up to and what you're planning. And it doesn't all have to be strictly CircuitPython. You can tell us about your holiday pie plans or sudden gusts of cold weather or other stuff that's on your mind. Anyway, um, so last week was a short week for me. I worked on some minor bugs um, and I did, I guess, belated hug report to MicroDev. I tested out one of their PRs belatedly for RGB matrix on the ESP32-S2 and it worked a charm. So uh, I merged that in. Um, this week, uh, I have a 3D printed LED lamp project that I started back at the beginning of December. And there, there's that stage that some of my projects get to where I know everything I need to do to finish it. There's just some work. And that's the part I need to do is the work. Um, in CircuitPython, what I'm going to be working on is an image filtering module for bit or function for bitmap tools. It will implement a certain kind of filter called a separable filter which I believe will let us blur, sharpen, and edge detect. And it will operate on 16-bit RGB images and maybe on grayscale images. Um, and I will be out on Friday and maybe out part of Tuesday. And with that, uh, Dan is up next. Then I have some notes to read. Did you mean Thursday? Uh, yes, I meant Thursday. <laughs> I misspoke. Anyway, over to you, Dan. Okay, so... Um... We've been having some bundling issues. We we uh, turned off the six po building the six point X bundles last week, which uh, caused some problems with Circup and some other things, and also async IO. Uh, Circup, the bundle builder wasn't working because the version of Python specified was too old, so it wasn't seeing changes to some uh, backing libraries that we need. So I fix some of those things. Some other people helped to fix some of those things. Um, I updated the circuitpython.org library page to remove mentions of the current 6.x bundles and update some other things. I did some other infrastructure updates, a lot of infrastructure in the past couple of weeks. And I'm working on that. I have some ideas for changing for things to do to Circup. And I'm continuing to fix the remaining CircuitPython 7.x issues. Right now I'm working on a wake up alarm bug where the wake up alarm um, disappears and I have an, I, I know how to fix that. Okay, that's it. All right, I have a couple of sets of notes to read and then it will be Katni's uh, turn after that. So David Gloud writes, um, using Arduino, which is almost totally new to me, to write some NDEF data onto an ST25DVK16K from a Cutie Pie and compile and upload the 2022 matrix portal update, as previously mentioned, from Paint Your Dragon. Then in CircuitPython, writing a URI in NDEF format to the same NFC tag using a modified version of FoamyGuy's EEPROM library. And finally, searching for and finding all the Adafruit projects I have with EEPROM that are currently not supported in CircuitPython. Next up, the notes from FoamyGuy. Last week was more PR reviews. One cool one was the Max 7219 chained matrix support. Testing and small fixes in Circup related to moving support for the 6X bundle. And worked on a driver library for the 24LC32 I2C EEPROM breakout. This week, keep going on open PRs, resolve issues in the tile grid properties PR, and look into generalizing the NVM helper library recently created to work on EEPROM and other storage that gets treated like byte arrays. So next we're over to you, Katni, and after that is Maker Melissa. All right, so last week um, was a very short week. I did a bunch of miscellaneous um, on my list, which was actually pretty good anyway to get some um, stuff done that was had, had been on my list for a while, but lower priority. Um, because it was sort of a one-off thing. Um, I moved from Canada back to the U.S., uh, which was an absolute ordeal. Um, 
including uh, movers canceling, which is why I gave a hug report to someone who's never going to see it um, because they managed to uh, come in at the last minute and really helped out. Um, and I started unpacking. Uh, so this week, uh, I need to get caught up on everything that I missed last week. I have uh, a very large number of unread emails in my inbox. Um, and then I'll be starting the guide for the Cutie Pie ESP32 S2, uh, possibly starting a guide for another new product that I don't know whether it's been discussed. So it's not out yet, don't ask. Um, possibly more miscellaneous. And then I'm off for at least Thursday and Friday, um, possibly more than that. Um, just depends on how the week goes. And uh, like I said, with such a short week last week and a short week this week, um, my list is, is very short. So that's what I've got. All right. Thank you. And yeah, so glad you're on the other side of that move. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, going on to Maker Melissa, and then I will have some notes to read. Okay, so last week I worked on uh, updating the Blinkhead display out to the latest CircuitPython 7 in terms of the API. It took me a bit to refamiliarize myself with the code since it had been a while since I'd worked on it. I was able to fix some of the APIs I had deviated on originally so they are more consistent to the original code, and I added typing information to everything. I also reviewed a bunch of PRs. Uh, for the next two weeks, I'm actually going to have a short week this week and I'll be out next week. Uh, so I'll be gone from the 24th and back on the third. Uh, I'll work on, uh, during this week, I'll work on splitting the common blink of display of functions into a display core module, like it is in the official display IO. And I'll try adding some more features that were missing after that. And that's where I'm at. Thank you. I'll read notes from Mark, and then I will pass it to Scott to round out the section. So uh, Mark, also known as Gamblor, writes, completing some performance tests to evaluate if PR number 5726 is worthwhile. We'll post the results in the PR for discussion, or for discussion in the weeds at some point. And I'm not familiar with what that PR is, but uh, checking on performance is good. Uh, great idea. Uh, anyway, so Scott, why don't you finish this up? I think that PR has to do with the rings on the on the LED glasses, the IS. Oh, okay. Uh, we were debating whether it needed to be written in C or not, or just in Python would be okay. So I think that's what Mark's referring to. All right, thanks for that um, context. Yeah, if I remember right, that's my guess. Uh, so for me, uh, last week was a short week. This is a short week. Uh, I'll be out Friday and probably out early on Thursday. I'm actually out early today because I have a dentist appointment and some other errands to run. Um, this is all typical holiday stuff, so if you need to meet up with me, please coordinate ahead of time with that. Um, next week, I will. I, sh I should be around like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but I'm, I'm making no promises in case we want to do something. So like I said, let me know if you, if you need me around for something. And I should also point out that uh, I'm not actually back the third. I'll be back the fourth. So I will be missing the first Monday of the year as well, um, back on the Tuesday. I have I copy my uh, partner's schedule uh, with their work. So uh, that's why. Um, this week, I, I started Raspberry Pi Zero support for the, for the Broadcom port. And I'd like to get that to a point where it's checked in. Um, I know there have been some SD card reports of errors and stuff. So I want to maybe look at that too. Um, I want to go through emails and reviews. That'll be my priority whenever I do sit down to work. I do want to make sure that other other folks and things are moving along, even though I'm mostly out. Uh, so that'll be my priority. Uh, but uh, I don't claim to do 24 hours like I try to do otherwise. Um, I'm also in the process of working on a KB2040 keyboard. Uh, it's a split keyboard. And uh, we'll be talking about it on the t PyCast tomorrow with Tom's Hardware. Um, there's a little bit of a weird issue with how the split keyboards are designed, where uh, it uses two pro micro format things, but the it's like two URX pins that are connected to each other, and UART is commonly used. So I might uh, might take a crack at doing UART transmission on a and on an RX pin via the PIO for the RP2040. Because uh, I'll need that. 
Um, and then uh, I'm also starting to think forwards to CircuitPython 2022. Um, for those of you who are new to uh, CircuitPython, this is kind of our annual planning uh, phase, which is it, we don't really kind of like aggregate back together anymore, but we do just like, I want to hear what everyone thinks about longer term CircuitPython stuff. So um, start thinking about that. Um, I'll take some of my deep dives in January to kind of go back and look at CircuitPython 21 and also talk more about like my thinking for CircuitPython 2022. And I'd love to hear other folks as well. So I uh, started thinking about that. I'll, I'll aim to do a, a blog post on the first of the year like I, I did last year as well. Um, so I think that's it for me. All right. Thank you, everybody, for those status updates. And thanks, everybody, for taking the time off because you and your families or your adopted families or your found families are... They're a big thing right now, and we need to pay attention to them. So anyway, in moving on to In the Weeds, um, I am maybe going to just pass by this item from Foamy Guy. Uh, he says we could hold off to discuss it next week, unless somebody else wants to weigh in on that. But I'm going to move down to Dan's um, topic first. Um, uh, wait. Oh. Can I just say generally own libraries are better? instead of glomming things onto other libraries. All Generally, right. I, yeah. All it's, right, well, it's easy, there's the word of it, Scott. <laughs> it, it's easier for people to find separate libraries than to understand that a library applies to a lot of different things, uh, is my opinion on that. I watched uh, Foamy Guy's, Foamy Guy's uh, uh, broadcast the last time, and he was working on it. And I think he, I think he has separated it out from the other uh, stuff. Okay. From the Fram, he just used the Fram, the Fram module as a model to start with. Right. But he did create, a, he did create a separate library for the EE Prom. Okay. That that sounds like the right approach to me. All right. Well, uh, Tim, if you're listening later, we're happy to talk about this in more. Mm -hmm detail when you get back, or maybe you felt like that was a good enough answer. So uh, you let us know, and we'll talk about it soon if we need to. And now I will hand it to Dan. Okie doke. Uh, this is um, something that we kind of discussed in an internal meeting before this, but um, currently the uh, continuous integration jobs, the GitHub Actions jobs for libraries and other things specify a version of Python. That version has changed over time. We started with 3.6. Some of them are 3.7. I moved some up to 3.10 recently. Um, the only reason for using a, an older version is maybe to prevent like the black formatter from trying to suggest things that aren't in Python code that we are writing that aren't available in CircuitPython, say. So, I believe that we can just use specify three as the version number, and um, it should work fine. Um, it'll pick the latest version. That and, is my understanding of how actions install yeah. or actions set up Python will work. Um, with Black and Pilot, don't both have a flag which says what the target version of Python? To right, check I think you're is. right. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I guess. Oh no! I when I was saying that, now I realize. I bet the reason was that we used to use. Uh, Ubuntu 18.04 as the run system, and that was pretty behind in terms of Python versions. So we specified a version. But now we can, I think we should just say three. So I'm going to make a, a PR to the cookie cutter so that new libraries will just have three and we'll eventually make a pass through all the libraries and update them and the other, other repositories that use continuous integration. So does anybody, but I just wanted to bring this up now to see if anybody had any thoughts about whether this would be a mistake for some reason. In my experience, these things eventually lead to an error when there's an upgrade and it treats something differently than it used to. But in general, we decide that that is the better of the alternatives to the alternative of just being out of date and and having to deal with it when it's a real crisis. I mean, either way, it becomes a bit of a crisis 
because your software is no longer building and shipping to users. But um, by getting, you know, five years behind, you have a worse problem than if it's, oh, well, now we have to temporarily pin something on 3.11 because 3.12 breaks it. But then you, you fix it and you don't get into this situation where you're so far behind that it's onerous to get through all those versions. So right. I say go for it, even knowing that someday we'll wake up and none of our modules will build or half of them won't build because of something that changed. But we know that and we accept it. We'll fix it right away. Yeah, I mean, and it's also problem... already happening, right? Yeah. For and the problem reason. that I had was that some, things, had an issue. some things were pinned at 3.6. And so one of the script libraries that we use said it needed a minimum of 3.7. So we didn't notice that we were using the old version for a while because uh, PIP wouldn't upgrade or whatever it was, wouldn't upgrade it to the new version because it says, oh, you're not running that version, so I won't I won't push a new upgrade. So that's an example of, of spe when what happens when you specify a version that's too old, that you end up using old libraries. They're old dependencies. Okay, so I'll do this, I'll just PR to um, the cookie cutter and then we'll, we'll have, we'll, we'll go through all the libraries and fix this. Okay. Thanks, Dan. And that brings us to Scott's topic. Uh, this, this one's basically for Dan. I'm like, how do you think 7.1's coming, Dan? Uh, I'd like to fix the... Uh, well, we could look at the... We could look at the... At the... At the... At the, the 7xx the was? Yeah, if, I, if, if some people... If you want to take a little bit of time to do this... There are now only 18 open issues. I just put a link in the chat of, of the 7xx issues. Right, so the question is, what of these issues do we want to fix for 7.1? Right, so I was going to fix the alarm dot wake up, alarm dot wake alarm 5343, which is near the bottom, because that's a, I think that's a significant regression. Okay. And I don't know if anybody else feels that there's something else here uh, 5612 deserves some investigation. Um, I don't, I'm not too worried. Uh, the S3 thing, 5680 at the top, I think we, that could be deferred and that could be fixed in main. I don't know, Melissa, yeah. about 5538, sending requests failed on second network call, whether that's been fixed. Which thing? Uh, 5538, which is like the eighth one or the seventh one. Ah, uh, look at now. As far as I know, it hasn't been fixed, but. Okay. Um, if, if, there, if, if people see some things here that they think should really be fixed before 7.1.0, then. Uh, let us know or put a comment in or say speak now or something. But a lot of the other ones, I think, could be deferred to 7.2. Maybe um, the image capture one, which is the next to the last one. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I'll have to look at that again. When Jerry first reported it, I didn't re ever reproduce it for myself, but then I haven't actually been using the JPEG code much in my testing, so... I mean, I don't doubt that there's something there, but um, it will become important to fix that one at some point. But I don't think for 710, 710 should not be held for that. Okay, that's what, that's okay. Yeah, my bias is definitely like, let's get 71 out the door because then we can also do a 72 beta. Yeah, yeah. And we'll find more stuff and I'll, I'll make a milestone for 72 right now. Yeah, it sounds good. So that we can track things. Okay, really that fast. sounds great. Okay. And I moved the one that you're working on, Dan, to 271. Okay, okay. Okie doke. All right, so I don't know whether we want to release, whether we want to wait. You want to wait till the new year to do this to actually release 710 final? I could make some RCs during Christmas week. I mean, during uh... Christmas New Year week. I'm okay doing it sooner than that. Me too. I feel like 
I feel like 7.1 beta has been out for a while. We have a good idea that it's pretty stable. Okay. Well, Jeff and I, you, you'll be you'll be coming and going, um, but mm -hmm. um, we could we could maybe do something. We could we could make a quiet release. I, I, the only issue is whether we make a release that has some significant issue that we need to fix right away. But then we fix it. So. Well, I'm around for the next few days, and if if. If I see something go by, just email me directly, and I can I can probably find time to help with anything. Okay. I just don't want to commit to anything. Yeah. But I'm around. It's not like I'm going to be away from my computer completely. Yeah, I'm not planning to. I'm not planning to take any significant time off. So. Okay. So you can call me in if you need me. All right. Thank you. All right, with that, we can wrap up In the Weeds as well as this meeting. Um, this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for December 20th, 2021. Um, thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be on all major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held uh, next Monday, December 27th, at the usual time. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time of day, you can be you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thank you, everybody who joined us today. Thanks, everyone.